ball is over the fence for a home run. A tremendous smash far over the left field fence for a home run by Joe DiMaggio, driving in Henrik ahead of him and making the score now 6-3. to three. New York over Chicago. Swung on belted. It's a long one. Deep in the left center. Back for Jean Frito. Back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch against the bullpen. Oh, doctor. Swung on. There's a drive hit out toward the right field corner. Henrik is going back. He can't get it. It's off the wall for a base hit. Here comes the tying run. And here comes the winning run. Back to throw. There's a left. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the baseball show. I'm Bill Rogan. Glad you could join us tonight. We have a pair of guests here, Pat Harris from WFAN Radio. And, Pat, you're breaking a record here, your third appearance on the baseball show, and I know you must be fired up about that. Yeah, I brought my bat with me. I'm raring to go. Well, I hope I don't talk out of line. Or I hope our next guest doesn't talk out of line because, well, I hope he does. Well, that's why we got him on this side. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mark Erne, he's a producer for the baseball show, and he's been begging me to get some airtime. So, hey, Mark, I, glad I you could join us. I appreciate this opportunity. A, to he's a baseball machine, and hopefully he'll be able to add to the program and pick up where I leave off. And uh, speaking of picking up and hitting people with bats, I was looking through the Bergen record today. Another guest joining us live from Chicago via the telephone, Dave Sela. Dave, how are you? Pretty good, Bill. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, Dave lives right across the street from Wrigley Field. And he's better known as the Seanometer guy, uh, the guy who sits in the bleachers and you see the Sean Dunstan batting average on a, on a cardboard getup he has there. And Dave, uh, you've gotten a lot of publicity out of this little thing that you guys started as a joke. Tell us about it. Well, you're right. It started uh, last year on June 5th. Uh, we had a sign that said, holy cow, one of Harry Carey's trademark phrases. And on the back, we couldn't figure out what to put on. So uh, Dunstan was hitting about 203 at the time, and we... Uh, did it kind of like a joke, you know, maybe we'd give him a little of an incentive to do well, and uh, he just took off. He, uh, we won every game from then on out, and he ended the season batting 278. So I think it kind of sparked him a little bit. Um, he's had that stigma about five years of being under his potential, and he finally uh, reached it last year, and he's doing well this year. Well, there's a shot right now of the Sean meter Dave is the fellow in the white hat. Holding it at that time, his average was 204. What's the current Sean Ameter say? Right now, I think he's uh, up to about 288 now. 288, so the Sean Ameter is still rising. Now, WGN, the, the television station for the Cubs, they're a national station. They go all across the country, and uh, you've gotten a lot of airtime all over the nation with that, and that has led to the Smithsonian Institute. Let us know about that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, during the offseason, in the winter, uh, we, you know, I figured, well, let's, let's go for some... Uh, for eternity here, so I sent some information to the Smithsonian, Smithsonian and uh, with some news clippings and things like that, and two months later they said, yeah, we'd like to accept it for our sports history collection. Now so, the Baseball Hall of Fame is calling. That's right, and we just uh, got word from them on Monday that they wanna, they're want they building a display devoted to the fan, which will be completed in about two years, and uh, the all-star version of the Seanometer, which we use this year, is uh, going to the Baseball Hall of Fame probably the end of September. Good heaven, that, that's pretty good. Now. Uh, being a bleacher bum in Wrigley Field, uh, you have to go to every game, I suppose, with the Sean Meter because people are disappointed if you're not there. This is true. Uh, it was tough for me at the beginning of the year. I had a job, and I was in sales, and I was cutting out every uh, so often around 1 o'clock to run over there. Um, about a month ago, I got laid off, and uh, it worked out well because we're selling T-shirts now. Those are popular. Um, Dunstan bought T-shirts for the entire Cubs team. And uh, so now it's not that big of a problem, being that I live across the street. I walk right out my dorm there. And uh, you're right, the fans from all over the country who watch GN really get a kick out of it when they come here. Uh, they really appreciate it, and they buy shirts, and uh, they enjoy it. Well, that's great that you got laid off and you could sell T-shirts and go to the <laughs> ball games. What, Isn't what, baseball great? <laughs> what more can you want? That reminds me of Lee Ely. Do you remember that, Pat and, and Mark, when Lee Ely said, you know, 85% of the world is working. The other 15% come out here to Wrigley Field and boo us. And, <laughs> although I have to admit, though, I didn't. when I was out, the few times I've been to Wrigley, I don't see anybody booing the Cubs. They, they ha definitely have the best fans in baseball. Would you agree, Dave? Oh, I would agree. They're like 13 games out now, and they're drawing over 30,000 for the last month and a half every game. And these majority of the games are played at 120 during the middle of the day. And uh, it's amazing the fan support they have. It's uh, the people out here just enjoy baseball regardless of how their team plays. 
And uh, it's a really a phenomenon out here at Wrigley. Well, we have a shot of the center field bleachers, the view at the center field bleachers, if we can get that on our screen. Am and I sober the there, Bill? Excuse me? Am I sober in the picture? Or? Well, uh, I think you were sober in the first one. <laughs> right now we're looking at the infield, and it's, a, a, of course, the best place, I think, to watch a ball game. Wrigley Field. That's taken from the left field bleachers. Left field and right field bleachers. I enjoy the way they get on each other by say, yelling mild obscenities back and forth. There's another <laughs> shot from the left field bleachers looking right. I wonder who that drunken bum in the picture is. <laughs> oh, oh, that's my friend Jim. Sorry about that, Jim, but that's a, a shot of Wrigley Field. And I tell you, it's, it's my favorite ballpark. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, Pat and Mark. Uh, Dave, uh, any closing uh, words? Well, I know I had sent you a Shawnometer shirt. Evidently, you haven't gotten it yet, but... Uh Hopefully you'll get that for next show. Okay, and, uh, we'll give that away as a trivia prize. Oh, excellent. And if any of your fans are interested, but we'll be out there for the rest of the year. Uh, probably head out to New York at the, the end of September for the last three games, New York versus the Cubs. So if anybody's out at Shea Stadium, look for us there and maybe throw some peanuts at us. <laughs> okay, well, I think they may throw more than peanuts. <laughs> more like here. knives and bullets. <laughs> but anyway, Dave, I look forward to seeing you when you come out here. Great. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Bill. Okay, take it easy. Take care. Dave Seela from Chicago, the Shawnometer guy, he's quite a character, and Wrigley Field is my personal favorite ballpark, and I know, Pat, you were in Detroit, and you like that ball yard, and uh, I'd like to know what you guys think of, of the various fields. Well, you know, it, it's a shame, and I think we lose a little bit of what baseball really is or, or really was every time we lose a, a good ballpark, although I understand, and Mark is familiar with Baltimore, that their new stadium is going to be more or less... Uh, in an old type fashion maybe you can tell us about that it's going to be from what I've seen the designs and everything they have a big railroad warehouse that'll make up behind uh, center field and right field going along there but the plan I've seen of it it pretty much looks like a cross between Wrigley and uh, Fenway up in Boston real nice natural grass it's got the uh, the overhangs coming in I think it'll be one or two levels good for about I think 45,000 but it's not one of these big super structured AstroTurf Stadium this can be a real throwback and I think that was important to the city when they looked to replace Memorial Stadium. So they're really excited about it. Uh, and I was there for the groundbreaking, in fact. One of these days in the history books, you may be able to see some pictures before and after uh, the new stadium, which they're looking to call Babe Ruth Stadium, ironically enough, which uh, should be interesting. So you may be in some of those pictures. Maybe some in we appreciate your support. Also, thanks to everyone here on the TKR crew. So until next time, see ya. The blues in Chicago. When baseball season rolls around When the snow melts away Do the cubbies still play In their ivy-covered fair yard ground When I was a boy They were my pride and joy But now they only bring fatigue To the home of the brave The land of the free And the doormat of the National League his friends, you know the law of averages says anything will happen that can. That's what it says. But the last time the Cubs won a National League pennant was the year we dropped the bomb on Japan. The Cubs made me a criminal.